I recently read The Institute by Stephen King, and it caught me thinking, is Stephen King sexist? <gasps> now, I will start this video with the disclaimer, this is the only Stephen King novel I have ever read. I have seen The Shining film. Have I seen any other films? No, I think that's it. I think I've only seen The Shining film. This is the only book of his I've ever read. So I'm basing this whole video on this book right here. If you disagree, please feel free to point me in the direction of books where he does a better job. But this book drove me a little bit insane with his character descriptions. Now, it's super normal for an author to describe their character, the way they look, their visual appearance, because as a reader, you've got to understand what you're looking at, what you're reading. You've got to understand the image in your mind so that you can get the picture correct. But King had this funny little, little uh, thing he liked to do where the description of the male characters was how important it was to the story so that you could understand a concept about them. The female characters, on the other hand, were almost exclusively described in how pretty they were. I counted how many times. So I broke the categories down into men's story, men looks, women's story, women looks. And I also included multiple tallies for when a character was described multiple times. So if the first time they were described plainly, important to the story, whatever, and then the second time they were described as specifically being pretty or the vice versa, then I added that as two tally marks. Men and their descriptions as important to the story were described 10 times. There was one man who was described as being pretty. Handsome. Women and their appearances as it was important for the story were described four times. And women who were described as pretty were described 11 times. For example, Sheriff John was described as a big bellied slow walker. So that immediately tells you about his character, his personality, the way he moves. But his employee, Deputy Wendy, was described as a knockout with a tight bun and a fully powered charm shield. Like, he might as well have just said that she's a bitch. <laughs> there was the homeless character, Orphan Annie, whose visual description ended at homeless. Like, she wasn't pretty. She, she was just homeless, that was it, nothing else. Later on, she did have extra descriptions where she was wearing a crazy outfit, but that was it. But what really annoyed me about the way he described his female characters was that he was even describing really young children in ways of how pretty they were. So for example, our protagonist was with a few friends and the girls were described as wearing leggings with their bosoms just blooming. Whereas the protagonist Luke and his friend Rolf were described as wearing baggy t-shirts. Had their balls just dropped or something? No, you're not gonna, you're not gonna tell us that information. And there would be so many times where there was a young child of 11 or 12 who was described with their breasts or their hips or something or their bums, which sometimes, yes, was a character observation, but most of the time it wasn't. Most of the time King was saying these things himself. And it wasn't just the descriptions. There were also lots of really gendered tropes. So there was lots of boys will be boys. There was a lot of Oh, the girl who arrived with the group but didn't immediately become best friends was labelled as the bitch. And the girls were always grouped together. It was always the girls, then it was Luke, Nick and George. It wasn't the girls and the boys. The boys were separate people and the girls were the girls. Also, if there was a black character, their description ended at black. And any time they were with another character, it was always described as the black girl was next to the white boy. Every time. But simultaneously, while all these weird descriptions were going on, 
King inserted a throwaway line where the chief of police was a woman. And also the main antagonist in the book, Mrs. Sigsby, is the boss of the entire institute. She's the boss of every single person in this book. But the chief of police line was just a throwaway line. It was there and it was gone. And for some reason, Mrs. Sigsby was always referred to as Mrs. Like other characters were referred to as just their surnames or they were doctor or it was the first names. But Mrs. Sigsby was always Mrs. Sigsby. And this always made her feel like she was like the spinster head teacher who was really bitter at having to work for her whole life with these snotty kids. And interestingly, she was described as the grammar perfect, no tits chief administrator. That was a character observation, but King didn't make any narrative choices to subvert the importance of the no tits aspect. So in reality, King didn't say anything that was overtly sexist, but he's definitely got a patriarchal hangover. <laughs>